Let's talk about the U.S. economy and how consumer spending booms, while at the same time it seems like almost everyone's savings rates are lowering. And despite the surge in spending, businesses are feeling the pain. Many are failing, holding on by slim margins and afraid of the worst, but almost inevitable. They are worried and they, in this particular instance, are restaurants like Pizza Hut, Boston Market, TGI Fridays, Popeyes, and Cracker Barrel, saying people just aren't going out to eat as much as they used to. I would also be willing to bet that in states like California, with rising menu price jumps made in hopes of countering or offsetting the new state-mandated minimum wage boost, large change like uh, Auntie Anne's pretzels and McDonald's will see a reduction in fast food patrons too. And even though the Fed rate decision meeting is today, and the odds of a cut are unlikely, the immediate impacts will be tough to recognize, but the long-lasting effects will continue to scar our paychecks and budgets for many many years to come. Reminding me of this comment I read yesterday on the community post poll that Kevin put up on his channel that read, I am not rich, but I am resourceful. Now that resonated with me along with this one too from Sarah said, life has gotten expensive even without living an extravagant lifestyle. That was left on one of Kevin's videos uh, and this one too. Yeah, this one's good. Good morning, Kevin. I'm up there in age, not too far up there, lol, and I feel I'm working harder trying to budget a disability check. I must pay my bills and then hope I have enough for personal products. Cola, cost of living adjustments, just isn't enough to live. I don't know who could literally live on this. Thank God he has brought me through month to month. Thanks for all you do. You're very well appreciated. That was very nice and sweet of Terry Threat to say, but unfortunately, all this bad news is in fact true. Life is tough and everything is really expensive and our costs are only going to continue going up. Now, my mom is here visiting us and yesterday we were all just sitting around and chatting it up a bit, basically getting caught up shooting the shit when we got to the topic of her homeowner's insurance premium. Now, granted, she does live in Georgia and not here in Florida, so she is already slightly better off for that reason. And fortunately, her roof is only 10 years old, but it is definitely a major pain point for insurers and policyholders. She was issued a non-renew notice by her former insurance company, and they basically dropped her for some ridiculous reason, which I will go into greater detail over on Patreon. But long story short, she got set up with a new insurance company, and she said her policy premium doubled. She is now paying two times more for the same house, same insurance, and her retirement income isn't exactly going up either. Now, granted, she did say she could have saved money on her homeowner's insurance by bundling it with her car insurance, but all that would have done is lower her homeowner's insurance by a little bit while raising her auto coverage policy premium higher. So in the end, it's like a net loss. Hard pass. She is not thrilled about what may happen when it is time to renew both policies. And if you have been following along on Squirrel Tribe Life, my other channel, then you know she's preparing to sell in Georgia and move to Florida anyway. That is a bit of a long story also, so I will save that for another day. But for now, let's continue to discuss our U.S. economy as a whole, as well as the financial burden we are all forced to carry because of it. So Wells Fargo, good old Wells Fargo says, the U.S. economy is actually a wolf in sheep's clothing as the Fortune magazine tries to explain that how the weak GDP report masks underlying strength. And a Wells Fargo bank economist stated how the first quarter GDP report showed so much deceleration and missed estimates by such a wide margin that stagflation fears are increasingly creeping up into Wall Street chatter. But the headline numbers of 1.6% growth was weighed down by volatile factors like a wider trade deficit and slower inventory restocking, which masked how robust consumer demand continues to be. In conclusion, he notes, wolf in sheep's clothing, soft GDP hides surging spending. Now, Kevin broke this down in layman's terms based on the impactful results of global conflict, war, challenges in the Panama Canal, the Port of Baltimore Key Bridge collapse, government intervention and credit card companies' fees, and now the introduction of a widespread rollout of loosely regulated BNPL, or buy now, pay later, options being shoved down our throats by retailers like Walmart. But the headlines, or narratives, seem like they paint a much brighter picture. For instance, wages, employment, inflation are up, causing headaches for the Fed. But the claims of underlying consumer strength and thriving household savings and balance sheets would be like the weatherman telling you, it is 30 degrees outside, but it feels like minus 10 below zero. Yeah, your paychecks are bigger, but everything costs more. So yay, consumerism. But you're still broke. And according to Axios and what's behind the unstoppable American consumer, well, they say 
The, econ the economic surprise in recent years is the resilience of the American consumer. High borrowing costs and lingering inflation are not crimping overall spending. And as we ask, why does this matter? They provide this answer. The drivers of such robust spending and how long they can last are key to what's ahead for the economy. And by the numbers, for the second straight month, personal consumption expenditures, PCE, rose 0.8% in March, the strongest in more than a year. But even while being adjusted for sticky inflation, spending still rose notably with an increase of 0.5%. Meanwhile, the spending increase outpaced that of disposable personal income, which rose 0.5% or 0.2% in real terms. And that brought the personal saving rate down to 3.2%, which is the lowest it's been since 2022. Lower saving rates are a pandemic shift that's stuck and consumers used to save at a far higher rate. But excluding the past few years, the saving rate was only lower in 2008. Most importantly, what they're saying now is, yes, the consumer is spending, but they continue to run down their savings in order to do so. This is according to Peter Bokvar, chief investment officer at Bleakley Advisory Group, and another macro analyst warns, consumers may be starting to feel that strong gains in the stock market are locked in and doing the savings for them followed by the intrigue and how another factor may be the immigration boom that helps boost the supply of workers. So in other words, higher spending is just a result of more shoppers. Imagine that. But if that's the case, it would cool concerns that strong spending is a sign that the economy is reheating and poses an even greater inflation risk. But will our government and most importantly, the Fed realize and accept this reality as truth? And maybe the better question to ask is, what will they do about it? But what they're saying is how in large part, sustained strong growth in consumption seems to be the result of a higher number of people who are working and producing, earning and spending, according to one vice chair. And he added that the unusually rapid population growth associated with elevated cross-border migration, not all of which has yet been incorporated in standard economic statistics. But while adjusting for higher population shows that on a per capita basis, personal consumption expenditures are less strong than they may appear from looking at the aggregate data. Basically, the bottom line, according to expert economists and analysts, the usually rapid population growth associated with elevated cross-border migration has not yet been incorporated into economic statistics. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, turn on the notification bell for all, and I will see you guys on the next one.